Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. This is the final episode of News Corner before Computex begins next week. Both Steve and I are flying out tomorrow night, so keep an eye out for a ton of Computex content coming in the next couple of days. Anyway, lots of news topics to get through in the lead up to the show, starting with a flurry of rumors surrounding Intel's 40th anniversary edition processor. The guys at Video Cards uncovered several retailers listing an as yet unannounced Intel Core i7-8086K, which is set to mark the 40th anniversary of the famous 8086 on June 8th. This new CPU could be unveiled at Intel's Computex keynote on June 5th, and it's highly likely we'll see it launch around the globe on June 8th, with pricing rumored to be around 70 to 100 US dollars more expensive than the i7-8700K, so that'd place it around the $450 mark. As for specs, it's not completely clear what we'll be getting, though these retail listings do point to a 5 GHz clock speed out of the box. The 8700K, of course, tops out with a 4.7 GHz single core turbo clock, so it sounds like the i7-8086K will push up to 5 GHz there. The base clock looks to be 4 GHz, again 300 MHz higher than the 8700K's base 3.7 GHz clock. It doesn't appear that the 8086K will be offering any more cores than the existing 8700 100K. In other words, we're still looking at a 6-core, 12-thread CPU. 8-core Coffee Lake CPUs are planned, but that seems to be for a later date. There's also no word on other features like TDP and cache, although as this appears to be just an up-clocked 8700K, I wouldn't expect anything too far from what the 8700K already provides. If Intel does want to create an up-clocked version of the 8700K as an anniversary edition processor, 8700K Silicon makes a perfect candidate as it's already quite easy to overclock to 5 GHz, there is a chance that the 8086Ks will be binned better than the 8700Ks as well, so possibly this new CPU will be better for overclockers. However, a rumor does suggest that it will not be soldered, so despite being a more expensive 8700K, we're still probably going to be left with some crappy Tim. Anyway, that's something to look out for towards the end of next week. Now, of course, with rumors of new Intel CPUs, AMD doesn't want to be left out of the party, so this week we've also seen a leak uncovering four new Zen Plus-based second gen Ryzen processors as first spotted by the tech report. This leak comes courtesy of ASRock who published a new CPU compatibility chart for their AB350M Pro 4 motherboard, detailing the four previously unheard of processors. Now you probably shouldn't get your hopes up because none of these CPUs are particularly exciting. At the high end of the scale, we have the Ryzen 5 2600E and Ryzen 7 2700E, which as their E suffix suggests, is just a lower TDP version of the existing 2600 and 2700 parts. The 2600E drops the base clock from 3.4 to 3.1 gigahertz, while the 2700E goes from 3.2 to 2.8 gigahertz, both in, with an unknown boost clock. Both CPUs pack a 45 watt TDP, while the 2600 and 2700R 65 watt chip so you can see the reduction there. Core configurations look the same as the non-E models as well. Then we have the Ryzen 5 2500X and Ryzen 3 2300X which look to be the first quad core CPUs in the second gen Ryzen line. Both have 65 watt TDPs, the 2300X gets a 3.5 GHz base while the 2500X is clocked at 3.6 GHz. These are very similar core counts and base clock speeds to the Ryzen 3 2200G and Ryzen 5 2400G though we expect the 2500X and 2300X to have higher boost clocks and sustain better CPU performance without the integrated Vega GPU. Considering Ryzen APUs are competitively priced and also offer integrated graphics, it'll be interesting to see where AMD prices the 2300X and 2500X, though we don't have any word on pricing just yet. Keep an eye out for them soon though. We're finally starting to see some concrete details on when NVIDIA might launch their next generation consumer GPUs. NVIDIA are set to give a presentation at the Hot Chips conference on August 20 titled NVIDIA's Next Generation Mainstream GPU, which suggests that at the very least, NVIDIA will be talking new GPUs in August. This seems to fit with other rumors and what we've been saying for a little while now. It doesn't look like NVIDIA will be unveiling new next generation consumer graphics cards at Computex next week. Instead, every Everything is pointing towards a July unveiling and a launch for Founders Edition cards. This would then allow Nvidia to discuss their next GPUs openly at Hot Chips in August, around the same time partners begin readying their custom designs. We've also heard that notebook variants of these GPUs will be available in November, so that's something to keep in mind. 
Instead, Nvidia will likely spend most of their Computex press event talking about other stuff like their self-driving car technology, G-Sync HDR, Max-Q laptops, and more. That'll no doubt disappoint those who want just new GPUs, but I don't think we'll have to wait too much longer for those. AMD Vega Graphics is finally coming to gaming laptops. This week, Acer announced the very first laptop to include both a second generation Ryzen processor and Radeon RX Vega Graphics, the Acer Predator Helios 500. The Helios 500 will be available in both an Intel and AMD configuration, although right now only the Intel model is listed on Acer's model listing page. However, the feature page for the product does detail a variant that will come with Radeon RX Vega 56 graphics and a Ryzen 7 2700 Pro processor, both of which are typically desktop parts. However, AMD did announce Vega mobile graphics at the start of the year, so it was only a matter of time before a Vega GPU showed up in a gaming laptop. What's not clear at this point is whether Vega 56 in this mobile device is a fully fledged desktop card or whether it'll be cut down in some way. It'd be disappointing if AMD named their mobile GPU Vega 56 only to include fewer compute units than the desktop Vega 56, so it seems unlikely they'd cut down in that area. However, desktop Vega 56 does pack a huge 210 watt TDP, which is much higher than most laptop thermal solutions could cope with. So we will definitely be seeing some sort of clock speed reduction to get that down to a more reasonable level. After all, the Intel model packs an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070, which has a mobile TDP well below 150 watts. The other interesting part is, of course, the Ryzen 7 2700 processor. We've seen four all desktop Ryzen CPUs in some laptops before, so it seems the Helios 500 will be another laptop to go down that path. The Ryzen 7 2700 does have a 65 watt TDP, which is a bit higher than the claimed 45 watts for the Core i9-8950HK used in the top end Intel model, but I expect actual power consumption to be similar for both of these models. Other than the CPU and GPU, the Helios 500 includes a 17.3 inch 1080p display with the 144Hz refresh, and you get either G-Sync or FreeSync with it depending on whether you go NVIDIA or AMD. Pricing starts at $2,000 for a model with the i7-8750H and GTX 1070. There's no word on how much the Ryzen plus Vega model will cost. Speaking of Ryzen in laptops, a rumor popped up this week suggesting AMD is gearing up to launch H-series Ryzen mobile CPUs for higher performance devices. These H-series parts would feature the same four cores and eight threads as the existing Ryzen U-series SKUs, but push up to much higher frequencies thanks to a higher TDP. In other words, Ryzen H-series will do pretty much exactly what Intel's H-series already does. These new processors were spotted in the 3 d Mark database as tested on an HP 84EF laptop, which is probably an engineering model. The processors in question are the Ryzen 7 2800H and Ryzen 5 2600H. The 2800H has a base clock of 3.4GHz, while the 2600H gets a 3.3GHz base. Both have integrated Vega graphics, and it seems the 2600H has Vega 8, while we're possibly looking at Vega 10 in the 2800H. There's no word on exact TDP, however base clocks are more than a gigahertz higher than the U-series SKU, so we're probably looking around that typical 45 watt range. In fact, it's quite likely that AMD will simply take their Ryzen 3 2200G and Ryzen 5 2400G, set them to their lowest configurable TDP of 45 watts, then repackage them for mobile devices. After all, both Ryzen Mobile U-series and Ravenridge already use the same APU die with four Ryzen cores and 11 Vega compute units. These H-series SKUs will just be pushing the silicon closer to the limits in a mobile form factor. A couple of days ago, Intel announced the availability of Optane DIMMs, which brings their 3D X-Point memory to the DDR4 memory bus. Intel is set to brand the sticks as Optane DC Persistent Memory, which differs from their Optane DC SSDs and also their Optane Memory for caching. A little bit confusing there with the naming, but anyway, Optane DIMMs will be available in 128, 256, and 512 gigabyte capacities. And while they will be shipping to select customers later this year, there won't be wide availability until 2019. 19. It'll also take a platform update to support Optane DC persistent memory because while they are pin compatible with DDR4 DIMM slots, it'll take a few tweaks and also software changes to support this sort of storage device through a memory controller. Intel says their next generation Xeon platform will introduce Optane DIMM support and for the time being this will be an enterprise technology primarily. 
The key benefit to Optane DC persistent memory is it bridges the performance gap between DRAM and NVMe or PCIe storage by shifting to the dim form factor, which removes the bandwidth and latency limitations of PCIe. However, Optane DIMMs are persistent, unlike DRAM, so they can be used as a proper storage device with performance approaching DRAM. We're not going to see DDR4-like performance from the Optane DC persistent memory to begin with, but it should be a lot faster than current Optane SSDs. But wait, there's more AMD APU news. Two new 35 watt Raven Ridge APUs were spotted in the supported processor list for ASUS's Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard. Yep, another AMD processor leak where the culprit is a list from a motherboard vendor. Anyway, the two APUs in question fall under the Athlon brand. We have the Athlon 200GE and Athlon Pro 200GE, both of which are 35 watt SKUs, down from the 65 watts as with other Raven Ridge parts, and both come with a 3.2 GHz base CPU clock. Unfortunately, we don't know what turbo clocks we're looking at or which GPU configuration these Athlon APUs will use. However, they are set to use Vega graphics as you'd expect for Raven Ridge. The crucial difference between these Athlon APUs and Ryzen branded Raven Ridge parts is the core count. Other Raven Ridge APUs are four cores and either four or eight threads, while the Athlon 200GE and Athlon Pro 200GE are two core, four thread parts. ASUS has launched a new mining motherboard, which is only interesting because it has 20 PCI Express X1 slots on it, wired as USB 3.0 ports that you can then convert into actual PCI ports using riser boards. I don't think this is the first time we've seen this sort of board, but it's always amusing to see a motherboard with so many USB ports on it. I'm not sure what the demand would be like for one of these mining boards. ASUS might be a little late to the party with waning interest in mining outside of ASIC boxes, but hey, this H370 board will be available soon for the miners out there. Patriot has launched a new selection of Viper RGB DDR4 memory, supporting speeds from DDR4 2666CL15 all the way up to DDR4 4133CL19 at 1.4 volts. The RGB module integrated into the heatspreader looks pretty cool, and it's a nice to get a wide range of speed options with RGB support. All Viper RGB memory supports both Intel and AMD platforms, and you'll also get RGB sync support with utilities from ASUS, ASRock, Gigabyte, and MSI. The modules are available now through Amazon with pricing ranging from $180 for a 16 gig 2666 kit to $280 for the top speed 16 gig 4133 kit. I thought I'd round out this news corner with a selection of game news from the past week or so, just in case you missed it. With E3 coming up in the next few weeks, there's been a fair few teasers for games. Just today, we got a very short teaser for the next Assassin's Creed game from Ubisoft titled Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which appears to be set in ancient Greece. Then a few days ago, we had the teaser trailer for Fallout 76, which is reportedly a survival multiplayer game. I'm sure fans that wanted another single player RPG will be a bit disappointed with that revelation, though again, we can expect more news at E3. Then we also had PUBG Corp suing Epic Games over Fortnite's Battle Royale mode, because of course that's going to go down well. Apparently Fortnite infringed on PUBG's copyright and plagiarized the game mode. Now that Fortnite is a bit more popular than PUBG, I reckon that's a bit salty from the PUBG guys, but it'll be interesting to see how that court case goes. Anyway, that's it for this week's News Corner. We'll hopefully be back next week with a News Corner episode from Computex, so stay tuned for that. Aside from that, subscribe to make sure you don't miss these episodes that typically go out every Friday, and I'll catch you in the next one.